In this video, we're going to go over the top 10 anatomical features of the skull that artists should be aware of. I'm Andrew Joseph Keith, the instructor for the Portrait Sculpting course and the Proco Figure Sculpting Fundamentals course, but the things we'll go over in this lesson can be applied to any type of artist interested in drawing, painting, or sculpting the portrait. Even if you're familiar with these anatomical features already, it's always good to refresh our memory with some repetition. The skull is important because it's the scaffolding of the face. It's the structure upon which all of those fleshy facial features are built. To truly master the portrait, it's essential to have a solid understanding of the skull. In the premium course, we'll go over a bunch of other anatomical features. We'll really go in depth on the anatomy of the skull, but these are the most important ones, the ones that I feel are the most crucial for artists to know. Feeling these bony landmarks on yourself can help you remember them so that you can keep them in mind the next time you're representing the head. Let's begin with the features on the facial mass of the skull. Number one, the mental protuberance of the mandible. The mental protuberance is the chin. The mandible is the jawbone. Looking at the mandible from below, you can see how it's very blocky, and you can see distinct plane changes at the corners of the chin. From the side view, the mental protuberance is at the bottom of the front plane of the face. When sculpting what I like to call profile pancakes, the mental protuberance is what I like to establish right after I've gotten the basic shape of the head. This gives me something to judge the size, angle, and shape of the other features off of. From the front view, I like to look for this rounded pentagon-like shape of the mental protuberance. This contributes to the rounded W rhythm below the mouth. This rhythm right here. The second anatomical feature is the angle of the mandible. The angle of the mandible, or angle of the jaw, is another important feature on the mandible. A common mistake is making this angle of the jaw too close to 90 degrees. However, the angle of the jaw is not a 90 degree angle. It's obtuse. While the angle from the front plane of the face to the bottom of the chin is acute. It's acute angle. Aww. So acute, so adorable. So these angles should look like this, not like this. The third anatomical feature is the mound of the mouth, also called the barrel of the mouth, or the dental mound. This is not one anatomical feature, but a collection of several anatomical features, including the teeth and the alveolar process, but you can just remember the mound of the mouth. The shape of this is like a bloated cylinder, or a mound, like a little hill. And this is important because the lips are built on top of this primary form of the mound of the mouth. The bottom of that mound of the mouth, combined with the mental protuberance, the chin, makes that rounded W shape that we already talked about. This ends at the corners of the mouth. It's pretty subtle, but it's there. The fourth feature is the anterior nasal spine of the maxilla. This is the tiny bump where the cartilage of your nose attaches to the skull. You can feel it on yourself, that bump right at the bottom of your nose. That bump is the anterior nasal spine of the maxilla. And on the skull, it gives us a clear indication of where the bottom of the nose is located. When sculpting the skull in clay, I like to take a little piece of clay and put it right there on the anterior nasal spine to give me an indication of where the bottom of the nose should be. The fifth important anatomical feature is the zygomatic arch. The zygomatic arch combines the zygomatic bone of the facial mass with the temporal bone of the cranial mass. Just as the name suggests, it's an arch. You can really see this arch when you look at it from above or from below. This zygomatic arch allows the muscle of the temporalis to pass under the zygomatic arch and attach to the mandible. From the front view, this is the widest point of the facial mass of the skull, right here. From the front view, the widest point of the skull itself is back here in the cranial mass. The zygomatic arch is about the same level as the bottom of the eye socket, and it travels back around to about the middle area of the ear. Feel it, feel it on yourself, the zygomatic arch. When sculpting the Bodum method block in, this is that horizontal high point feature that we lay in. The sixth important feature are the eye sockets, also called the orbits. 
The orbits are interesting because they're actually made up of four facial bones and three cranial bones. So there's seven bones altogether that all make contact with the eye socket. So the orbits connect the facial bones with the cranial bones. The shape of the orbits is essential to capture accurately if you want the face to look right. And if you want the face to look left, you still have to sculpt it right. They're not simple rounded concave bowls. They look more like, like, like this kind of, like this shape. Can you see that? This downward tilt of the outside of the orbits creates kind of a sad looking shape. Here's what the orbit looks like from the side view. I find that it's sometimes easier to judge the shape of the side of the eye socket using straight lines rather than trying to capture the exact curves. Now let's move on to some features on the cranial mass of the skull. Number seven, the superior temporal line that travels from the frontal bone to the parietal bone. Here you can see it, that there's kind of that plane change. On me, it's pretty pronounced, that plane change. When sculpting a simplified head, this is where the transition from the front plane transitions to the side plane and where the top plane transitions to the side plane of the face. Number eight, the external occipital protuberance of the occipital bone. Moving to the back of the head, we have the external occipital protuberance, right there. You can feel this on your own skull by feeling the back of the skull where the skull ends. That bump is the external occipital protuberance. This bump of the external occipital protuberance is where the muscles of the back of the neck attach to the skull. This also gives us an indication of where the back bottom plane of the cranial mass begins. On this simple skull, you can see how I indicated this bony feature and the plane change to this relatively flat area at the bottom of the skull. Sometimes when skulls are placed on a flat surface, the bottom of the mental protuberance and the angle of the jaw will align with the back of the skull at the external occipital protuberance so that all three of these features touch the table at the same time. Number nine is the foramen magnum of the occipital bone. This is the hole where the spinal cord passes through and where the spine begins. It's located more towards the back of the head. And when you nod, that joint is happening just below the foramen magnum. Okay, number 10, our final feature is the mastoid process of the temporal bone. The mastoid process is where the sternocleidomastoid muscle attaches. This muscle right here. For artists, this is probably the most important muscle of the head and neck to be aware of because it gives us a clear indication of where the mastoid process is behind the ear as well as where it attaches to the sternum as well as the clavicle. You can feel the bump of the mastoid process if you feel just behind your ear, that bump that bony bump is the mastoid process of the temporal bone. Those are my top 10 picks of the most important anatomical features of the skull. If there's any feature that you think I missed, please put it down in the comments below and I'd love to hear what you think the most important features of the skull are. If you'd like some more in-depth lessons on these and other anatomical features, be sure to get the premium course over at proca.com slash portrait sculpt. If you found this video helpful and you'd like to see more like it, be sure to go over and subscribe to the Proco 3D YouTube channel. Or you could, you know, just get the full course over at Proco.com. Hope to see you over there.